everyone, and welcome to this latest edition of Blues Clues from our XBTV studios here at Gulfstream Park. Happy to have Tyler Gaffleone, one of the leading riders here in South Florida on the broadcast. Happy to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you, man. Thanks so much. And I almost, I had to hesitate. I wanted you on the show, but I realized you're a pretty big Pittsburgh Penguins fan. And as yeah. a big New York Rangers, suffering New York Rangers fan, I said, uh, I don't know. But in the end, you, you won out. Uh, you know, we got lucky. Big Crosby fan? Big Crosby fan. Since I was a kid, I mean, he's a great athlete, and he was always a young gun, so I kind of admired him, looked up to him. What other sports do you like outside racing? Hockey, obviously. Are Honestly, you a big football fan? Absolutely. I love all sports. Uh, baseball, football, lacrosse, uh, soccer. I follow everything as much as I can. Oh, that's great. I played lacrosse in high school and college. Oh, I played so in high what? school. Oh, did you? Yeah, what? Mid midi or attackman? Midi. Yeah, yeah, midi. I bet you're probably pretty fast, yeah, actually. Yeah, I, I was quick. That was my best attribute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. Now, seems like switching gears. Do you have any, any free time outside of horse racing in general? I mean, yeah, we get a couple of days off a week. Uh, during the summer, I travel a lot, but um, I try and utilize my downtime as much as possible. Just go to the beach, hang out with friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're, you're a real Florida boy, it Absolutely. seems like. Yeah, I'm born and raised down here. Is there a, a, a sense of maybe some extra pride just because you're, you're from Florida, you're from the United States, and there aren't many jockeys, certainly leading jockeys, I think, in the country from this part of the world. Absolutely, I mean, Jerry Bailey was my idol growing up, so I was kind of like um, following in his footsteps as much as I can. And it's, it's pretty nice. Nice, and for your whole life, I mean, your dad is a former rider. I think your uncle was a jockey as well. Uh, right? My grandfather. Grandfather. Yes, sir. So you, I'm assuming you wanted to be in the game from the moment you really knew what a horse was. Absolutely, I mean, I used to go to the racetrack with my dad. Uh, my grandfather was always around. Uh, and I just fell in love with it the first time I sat on a horse. What's your career been like? I mean, in just a, a couple of wor words. Uh, a whirlwind. Yeah. <laughs> it's been incredible. Um, never really expected to do this well. I just kind of came in hoping I could make a living with doing this and just enjoy myself. But I've been very blessed. What's the toughest part for a young rider trying to break in at a very high level like it is here at Gulfstream Park. Uh, it's so tough. Um, I mean, you just got to come out with confidence and get lucky. You got to ride for the right people and catch breaks. Hopefully you find a couple nice horses to help you out. Now, growing up, I was a big Jerry Bailey fan. Still my, my number one favorite rider of all time for, for all the obvious reasons. I mean, when you watched him ride during his racing days and even now maybe going back and watching replays, what impressed you and impresses you about what what Jerry could do on horseback. I uh, just the way he positioned horse. He was such a smart rider. Uh, was always in the right spot. I was told from many people he, he could look at a form and tell you exactly where he needed to be, what he had to do, and he would go out there and execute it perfectly. Is that something you try to obviously emulate uh, riding now? As much as I can. I'm. <laughs> he's, he was so good. I don't think I'll ever get there, but I tried. Clips award. What was that like? Uh, it was special. It was, it was a goal of mine as a child, but when I started riding, I kind of forgot about it. It's just kind of put it to the side, just focus on what's going on right now. But when it came time, it was really exciting just to be nominated. And I ran against a good friend of mine, Eric Kinsell, who mm -hmm. had a great year as well. And it was really special. Yeah, no, that's great. Champion Apprentice. And as far as how this meet's gone, this championship meet at Gulfstream, it's hard to believe. I mean, we're less, as we tape this, less than two weeks out to the Florida Derby. It's gone by so fast, but it's that been today. great. It's nuts. I mean, I was just, right before we taped this, you won your 77th race of the uh, meet on Pure One for Christophe Kaman. This meet in general, has it, even though it's not over, has it lived up to your expectations going in? Absolutely. I mean, my agent and I had high expectations coming in this year. We wanted to come out and perform well. Uh, he does a great job lining up horses for me and all the trainers and the people I ride for, they've sent these horses over ready, so it makes my job a lot easier. And Matt Musiker, your agent, obviously a longtime uh, agent to Hall of Famer Javier Castellano, does it make your life easier as a rider having a guy who's such a professional? I mean, I've, I've often called him an agent's agent because he just seems to, to really get the gig. Does that make your life a little easier? Absolutely. When I first started riding, he told me I have one job. He said he's going to put me on the horse side. I just got to go out there and perform. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's definitely done his job well. Now, we all want to know, 
as you do your job well, what are your immediate plans? Because the Florida Derby is March 31st. This meet officially ends April 1st. And I think a lot of people might be expecting you to, to move out of Florida during the summer months. What are you guys planning to do? Our plan is uh, we're going to go to Keeneland for opening week. Uh, we have a couple of horses up there to ride. And then we're going to come back here for the spring meet and come this summer. We're pretty sure we're going to go to Saratoga. And then from there, we'll hopefully go to Keeneland for the fall meet. That's great. So we'll have you down here in the spring. Absolutely. Just too much opportunity maybe to give up? Yeah, there's a lot of new horsemen. Uh, the racetracks get bumped up the purses this year, and just it's a good place to be. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I mean, things are going well from you. You're a native of Davie, so this is, this is home. Yeah, and I'm very comfortable here. Is this... Is this a, a tough track, though? I know you know it like the back of your hand, much like Edgar Zayas and Amise Al Jaramillo. Uh, is it a tough track to ride just with maybe, I think of the turf course, how tight the turns can be? What's the lay of the land like? Uh, the turf course is very speed favoring, and um, the turns are definitely tight, but a couple trips over the track is pretty easy. Mm -hmm. You start to get a good read on it, and if you watch races from early on, it changes day to day, but you can get a good bias on it. Now, I learned right before Tyler and I started this interview, you're a big racing historian and grew up reading horse racing books, watching, and Tyler's a little younger than I am. You had YouTube when you were a little younger. Yeah, and my dad's old agent from Boston. He used to keep all the old racing tapes so nice. in his basement, and so we used to go down there and watch them. It was, it was very special. And you still do that now, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Every day I go home, I'll start watching my races, my replays, and then by the end of the night, I'm watching old, old like, just depends, the uh, 90s, 80s, whatever era I'm in that day. That's cool. Yeah, the mid-90s is really That's like, my favorite. yeah, mid-90s is my sweet spot. Holy Bull, Cigar, they were my first Absolutely. two, I mean, fall in love, love racing for the, for the rest of your life kinds of horses. Um, and obviously, because you, you just mentioned it, you, you critique yourself at night, go home, watch films, and maybe see how you won a race or what you could have done a little better? Absolutely. I mean, you can never stop learning in this game. And even if you win a race, there's always something you could have done differently. Uh, especially if you lose you definitely don't want to make that mistake again so just try and learn from it and you got to be your, your own toughest critique yeah no doubt I think uh, I know I am my own toughest uh, critic and, and pretty hard on myself before we wrap up uh, given your knowledge of racing and your career thus far who is your favorite horse uh, I gotta say spectacular bid just because of his record? I mean, when you go back and look at his past performances in the Daily Racing Forum Champions Book, it, an amazing horse. Yeah, just the horses that he ran against, the uh, races that he ran in, he showed up every time and he gave it his all. You, you got to admire that. All right. Well, this was a lot of fun, Tyler. Thank you so much. Continued success. Glad you're hanging out this spring with us here yeah. at Gulfstream for the most part. Happy to be here. And we'll look for you in the winter circle. That'd be great. All right. And that'll do it, everybody, for this latest edition of Blues Clues. We'll see you next time right here from RxBTV Studios. <laughs>